Welcome to Complexity Made Simple. My name is Paul Allen and the subject of today's newsletter is types of types of data, variable data and discrete data. One of the things that Six Sigma is teaching you to be is a world class technical problem solver. That's what you are learning if you go and do the Six Sigma course. You are learning to be a world class technical problem solver. This should be a skill you use, not a certificate you hang on the wall. And one of the key points about being a world class technical problem solver is being able to get the best answer in the fastest possible time and understanding the two types of data and which one is the best to use is part of that. So here's the two types of data. The first one is known as variable data. I prefer it to call to call it measurable data. What does that look like? It's on a scale. Typically, you're going to measure millimeters, you're going to measure temperature, you're going to measure hardness, you're going to measure volts coming out of a circuit. Measurable data is typically on a scale. It's also known as continuous data because I can be anywhere on that scale. The other type of data, and this is the type of data we tend to love to use by the way, um, is known as discrete data. And discrete data typically appears when we look at the problem as pass and fail. And of course we can we can convert this result into this. So if we measure something and we can say, ah, I'm looking at the size of something is 3.215 millimeters, and I'm gonna say, oh well, that's a pass or that's a fail. So we often take this type of data and we convert to this type of data for good reason because often we try to make it simple for the operator we give them a gauge or a rule or we have a jig that just goes red light green light and we make it nice and simple for them to make a decision so the production is fast clear and unambiguous nothing wrong with that at all but when you get a problem which type of data should you lay your hands on? So when this starts giving me constant fail, 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 and somebody puts their hand up and say, we need help, when you come to the process and you've got this type of data, is this okay? Or should we go and look at measurable data instead? Well, they talk about measurable data being information rich. Because it's information rich, the amount of data points you need is so much smaller. If you worked out a statistical sample size for this type of data, typically it only wants you to go and get 30 to 50. If you go and work out a statistical sample size for this type of data, Wow, look at the difference. 1,000 to 3,000. So, if you want to get information, lots of information, fast, you're a world-class technical problem solver. That's what you use, information. You need this stuff. Let me show you what happens. Imagine, let's draw a picture, look. You go to a problem, you measure it. Problem, looks like this. Let's say there's 5% in each tail. What have you got to do to fix that? Well, this is a problem with noise. You have to squeeze that distribution in. If you have this problem, typically, it's going to take three months to fix that. You're going to need a team, and it's going to take a project, probably a Six Sigma project. Okay, discrete data, by the way, He's just going to say, you've just got a 10% reject rate. Okay, so there's picture number one. Now imagine, let's put the same, we'll put the same tolerances in. 
we got this problem. So the defect rate in the tail here is 10%. Now what have you got to do? Well, you have to centre this. Now typically, centering the process is very quick. This probably is going to take three minutes at most. Three days, usually. One person, usually a technical person. Possibly a tool maker or a technician can fix this. And doesn't need a team, doesn't need a team or a project. Although you might follow it up and say, why did that get blown off course and do some kind of five whys analysis? Um, so this is going to take three minutes, this is going to take three months. This, this is important knowledge to know, by the way. What will pass-fail data tell you? You have a 10% reject rate, and that's it. Look, as far as, as, far as the discrete data is concerned, these two problems are identical. As far as the measurable data is concerned, they are very different. They need two completely different types of action and reaction. And you can see the amount of different resources that you need. You need to know. Measurable data. This is, this is gold dust data. This is the data that you want to get your hands on, if at all possible. Now in the difference between types of data and getting the best type of data makes you a world class technical problem solver. If you'd like to know more about any of the concepts covered in this video or any of the other concepts covered in my, uh, my other tutorial videos, then here's my latest book, Drink Tea and Read the Paper. It covers everything you need to know about how to make sure that Six Sigma becomes world-class engineering in your company. Otherwise, if you'd like to get in touch with me, a little bit of help about Lean, a little bit of help with Six Sigma, please contact me on the email below.